There we go. Ah, all this time I was muted. Y'all didn't hear anything I said. <laughs> this has been that kind of morning. <laughs> it's been that kind of morning. Oh, man. So again, welcome to Touch Base Day. My name is Ron Foss, and I'm touching base with you, as I always do every day, except for Sunday. And I'm so sorry. I think you can hear me now. Uh, I don't know why the mute went on. I just don't know why the mute popped on. Anyway, here I am. You can hear me now. I think you can hear me now. Can you hear me? Now you can hear me. Thank you so much. Uh, I don't know why I didn't see you guys saying... <laughs> <laughs> oh. I have to tell you, this morning has been one of those mornings. It has been challenging from the moment I woke up. <laughs> so I, I expect many things to probably happen in this uh, broadcast that normally would not happen. I thought I had this thing under control. But today has been one of those days. It's just a day. It's, hey, all right. It came to pass, as they say. It's just one of those days. Okay, Chrissy's is in the building. What's going on, Chrissy? Derek Tato is in the building. Chrissy and Amparo is in the building. And G is in the building. Okay, maybe those folks in now uh, Instagram. Were you able to hear me on Instagram? I wonder. I wonder were you able to hear me. But if you aren't, if you're even Instagram, come over to our channel on YouTube, um, Touch Base Daily on YouTube. You'll get a better experience. You can interact. That's what I was saying when I was muted. Don't know how that happened, but now I'm here. You can hear. Now you can hear me. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about um, tips, but I definitely want to bring a couple of items to your attention for today. Yesterday, uh, Gaza, the Gaza uh, ceasefire could be near. So um, they had a conversation. Uh, so the news reporters, uh, first of all, Biden was in New York City yesterday at uh, NBC at Rockefeller Center. And um, so uh, they also, uh, one of the reporters asked him, when are we getting a ceasefire? When do, we need to control what's going on in the Israel-Gaza situation happening. I, I hate when you use it a war, because it's not really a war, it's really a, a slaughter. So, um, but they are saying that there could be a ceasefire coming next week. So let's stay tuned for that. Looming in government, is a gov the looming is the government shutdown again again we why why do we have to do this all the time why why is it that we just can't pass a law and this i blame the democrats when the democrats had the house and the democrats had the, or both side both chambers of the of the congress they had the presidency and they should have passed a law regarding this situation, that there will be no more government shutdowns for political craziness. This is ridiculous. Every six months, we got to think about a government shutdown? Oh, God help us in this country. Anyway, next thing that's on the agenda, um, for those that are following uh, climate change and what's going on in the world, Antarctica's uh, doomsday glacier is melting. Uh, it is the size of Florida, and they feel it's going to break off at some point sooner than ex was expected. And if that happens, the uh, waters will rise around the globe. Uh, could you imagine Florida being chopped off New York? I mean, chopped off the United States and dumped into the ocean? Well, that's what the doomsday glacier is heading for so and that means people places that are in low um sea level uh low what you call sea level places like uh florida which is pretty much flat would be underwater some places in the very low areas uh new orleans all those areas new york would also be affected all the coastal cities will be affected by this doomsday glacier so that's in the news and i did not pre create a a marker for this but how many of you heard about the young lad, 25 years old, I think he is, that set himself ablaze in Washington, D.C., in front of the Israeli embassy? Did y'all hear about that? Did you guys hear about that yesterday? So sad. So sad. And um, it's just, man, what is, I don't know. You, 
and he died. He died from his um from his wounds of setting himself ablaze. Um, what do you, have you guys heard about that? Yeah. Yeah, he died. Chrissy, he died. That's why I bring the news to you guys every morning because I know some of the stuff you haven't heard. Some of you guys are not, you know, tuned into like that. But yeah, he uh in, in the protest of what's going on in Israel and Israel's assault on um the, the folks on God on the Gaza Strip. He's uh he's in the Air Force. He was an Air Force. I forgot what rank he was, but he was in the Air Force. And uh and he decided to go in front of the Israeli embassy and set itself on fire in protest. And he then later died. Uh, it is real. And people are willing to die to save other human beings from the tragedy that's going on in Israel. Uh, I should say with the Israelis against the uh, people of Gaza Strip. And uh, so sad, it's so sad that it came to that, that a young person felt so helpless. And I don't wanna say, I mean, he's 25 years old. I mean, but I mean, obviously the older I get, everybody becomes more younger. So, but 25 years old, no longer with us because he he saw the, the anguish of the people of Gaza not getting fed, no homes, homes being bombed, children being killed, thousands and thousands of people are dead in uh, on the Palestinian side. And, you know, I know that that October 7th um, incident of those, the you know, Hamas coming in and killing and kidnapping and all the other stuff that went on, but I don't think the people of pa Palestinian, the Palestinian people on the Gaza Strip deserve to have 35,000 people dead because of that event. It's, it's just unacceptable. And, and uh, Biden is, is suffering also in his approach because unfortunately, I, it really, I mean, it was, it's a complicated situation with Israel with the, when it comes to America. But America could just simply say, you know what? We're not giving you any more money. Stop it. Because we do, we do give them lots of money per year. And um, and all America has to do is say, you know what? You either stop it now or we're getting you getting no money. And it's just it's really that simple. I know our relationship is complex. It's the Middle East. Everything in the Middle East is complex. But so sad. Uh, Brian says, 25-year-old Air Force Airman, he was white, and he said in a prior video, he would no longer be complicit in genocide. That was exactly, yeah, thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. B. Yeah, absolutely horrible. But I understand why this 25-year-old Man, he must have seen some things, or he must have something really triggered him to go all the way to take his life for the people of Palestinian, the Palestinians. Um, I see here so sad that we still haven't evolved to stop wars. You know, you know, there used to be a song, war, who. Huh, what is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Say it again. Say it again. War. What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Nothing. If humans have not learned anything, humans keep repeating the same stupidity. Same thing with uh, Russia and Ukraine. War. What is it good for? All of those Ukrainians I think they said. Uh, uh, I think they said thirty-one thousand Ukrainians are dead. Thirty-one thousand Ukrainians, and they say more on the Russian side. What? Think about it. that. Is 
And I, uh, when I, when I see news like that, when people are dying uselessly, or even in our streets here in America, or in neighborhoods, and there's people dying for no good cause or no good reason. There's a place for death. There's a place to die. But it does. It, it baffles me. You know, I was just reading about. Uh, yesterday, I think it was on the uh, the civil war in Sudan. And, I mean, another place in the world. It's going to be going on now for I think they said ten months or eleven months in Sudan. And um, these are places that, yeah, like Kimmy Kim, Kim, so sad that we still haven't evolved. What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. The only thing that happens when people die, when, when there's war, are that the poor people are dead, the rich people still live, the people in the in the political uh, arena seats still live. It's just sad, so sad. And so, anyway, just wanted to bring those those news headlines to your attention because they are important. And um, there's, a lot, there's a whole lot more going on in the news. Uh, there's also um, in Michigan, they are having their primaries today. So that, stay tuned to that. Um, they are going to do a pro, what's called a protest, <clears throat> protest vote against uh, Biden but on the Democrat side. And then on the um, Republican side is going to be obviously a vote for Trump. Um, Derek says, our problem is we spend more of we spend more of on war and other countries and not take care of the citizens in our country. Absolutely, yeah. G, G says that part. Yeah, you with I mean they're always saying they have no money for health care in this country. The money we spend on one bomber could feed the whole country. One bomber, one F-16, one stealth bomber, let's put it that way, one stealth bomber could feed the country for years. One stealth bomber. Computer, how much does a stealth bomber cost? The Northrop Grumman B-2 Spirit Bomber costs 737 million US dollars. Look at that, 700. Computer, repeat. The Northrop Grumman B-2 Spirit Bomber costs 737 million U.S. dollars. 700 million dollars for a stealth bomber. 700 million for one. For one. Yeah, it's just sad. We are, are but again, again, you get the country you vote for. If people don't vote for people that care about human humanity, then you will not get that outcome. If you don't vote for people that care about feeding the poor, the widows, educating the uneducated, that's the country you get. And for some reason, part of our country loves being, loves to put people in office that do nothing for them, do nothing. Republicans are in office all throughout the, the South. And the South has the worst in education, worst in, worst in healthcare, worst in poverty. The Northern, or the, I should say the big city states take care of the Southern states, but yet these still Southern states still keep voting people into office that really don't care about them. And as much as they talk about caring about life, they don't care about that either. I'm supposed to be teaching, am I? I'm supposed to be going to teaching, Tip Tuesday. <clears throat> but I just, I just had to talk about this for a moment. I usually try to stay clear of politics on a Tuesday, but I couldn't resist. Um, Kimmy Kim says the politics are keeping the crazy, greedy men from taking over. Uh, Brian says in today's Michigan primary, many uh, re 
Repo uh, Republicans are voting Nikki Haley to combat Agent Orange. Oh, okay. Hopefully we'll see a, a, a Nikki win. Not that she's even better, any better than Trump. Well, she is better than Trump, but she's still a little crazy on her policies. Um, Brian says, also, when I voted, the Democratic primary slip has a box for uncommitted. Yes, that's what's on the box. Uncommitted. Michigan's has the biggest Palestinian, Arab, and Indian population in the United States. Yep, and they are making their voices known. Oh, we just lost Instagram again. Oh, well, that's why we can't do Instagram. Instagram, sorry, guys. That's why I keep telling you to come over. Instagram feed just dropped again. Sad. Oh, well. Oh, well. Sorry, Instagram folks. But most of everyone's in here, so that's good. Everybody's already made their transfer over um, to YouTube. Most of, our pop, most of our community is here. But, yep, Instagram just dropped again. All going Instagram. <laughs> Juji says, you and that janky IG. <laughs> she keep telling me, don't you just don't use it. But people come in through Instagram. People get the alerts from Instagram for the scenes too. Um, but yeah, Instagram, as usual, is acting up. It is no longer working. So anyway, it is what it is. Sorry. Okay, let's get to the let's get to let's get to class. Let's do some convert. Let's have some conversations on tips for cityscape sunset photography. And um, um, let me get this all queued in. I'm going to show you a couple of photos, and uh, and then we'll, we'll talk about some of this uh, as we connect on it. So let's let's get that all right. Let's get that for you on the screen. So today, I mean, and this is a little bit of sunset, but a little bit of blue hour um, photography. And so how to take better cityscape sunset photographer, you know, photos. So cityscape sunsets, cityscape sunset photography is a beautiful way to capture the colors and shapes of the urban landscape in the golden light. So here we go. Let me just show, show you a couple of photos. And um, this is a photo I took over at the Hudson Yards, not Hudson Yards, um, in the village, looking over towards Jersey. And people say, Ron, did you put that line in there? Nope, that was exactly how the sky looked. It was crazy. That's why I took it. Um, again, some sunsets over the sky, over the New Jersey. This is over Brooklyn and lower Manhattan. This is a uh, sunset, uh, which is happens to be a part of what's called Manhattan Hinge in New York City. And this is another sunset blue hour um, taken from the um, World Trade Center looking towards Brooklyn and the Lower East Side of Manhattan. Um, that's from my window, a beautiful sun sil silhouette sunset after a major, snow, uh, major thunderstorm that happened here in New York. And also another day where the sun was nicely setting and getting some beautiful colors and getting some beautiful cityscapes. And also, here's another picture. This happens to be a sunrise. Um, the sunrise and the sunsets pretty much are the same. The same rules apply. And here's another sunset uh, with the BQE, Governor's Island, uh, right underneath the sun. And then back to that little guy. Okay. So these can be found in the Patreon stories. Um, that's what I'm getting this information from, from my Patreon community. I posted this today for them, uh, tips for uh, Cityscape Sunset Photography. You want the full, the full in-depth, you can do that Go on Patreon. You'll have that, guys. Um, here we go. However, it can also, let me just pop this off a little bit. Here we go. However, it can also be challenging to get the right exposure and composition and timing. So... 
There's some things. Here's some tips for you guys. Number one, plan ahead. Plan ahead. You want to plan ahead and look at what is happening. You know, you want to say, okay, the sun sets. Check the weather. I always, I always say, computer, what time is sunset today? Sunset in New York City will be at 545 p.m. today. There you go. So I will ask my computer, or you can go on Google. And you can go on Google and say, hey, computer, what time? Oh, sorry. Don't go there. You can ask your devices or go on and check this. what, what time is your sunset. And try to get there usually about an hour or two before the sun sets. And you can kind of like roam around, look around. So here it goes. It says, check the weather forecast, the sunset time, and the direction of the sun. Look for the locations that offer a clear view of the skyline the horizon and the water if there's any for we folks that live on the coastals coastals we have you know we have waterways uh arrive early and scout the area for the best spots stay late and capture the blue hour you know we, i love the blue hour when the sky turns dark blue and the city lights create stunning contrasts okay and we'll have q a after this so We'll have q and I'm going to try to keep the look and see what you guys are saying as well. I'll keep that going. And also, next, use the right camera settings. Use the right camera settings. What does that mean? Use the right camera settings. Set your white balance to cloudy or shade. Like for the, many of you, uh, for many of us, we have these settings on our camera. And uh, most of it's using, you can catch in the back screen and for the newer cameras, but on the older cameras is up here. And you can, you can look at your white balance and you can set it to cloudy or shade. And what that does, it just gives, it, it, it offsets the white balance from what it really is to now more warm colors or more cool colors. So that way you get more warm means more orange, more yellows are in the picture. If you say cooler, it means more blues, more whites. So it gets more, you know, like when you think of the Game of Thrones and the creatures coming in from um, the, you know, it's winter, winter is coming and the, and the creatures are coming in, the bad guys, the winter, the winter soldiers, um, they, the scenes are all blue because they add extra, you know, that extra cloud in there. Um, but then you can go to a scene in the Game of Thrones where they're in the southern countries. Then you see a tint of orange, which we call warm. So they kind of use that in film. Film will use certain um, little tricks of the trade to kind of like convey their messages. The south is warm. So you use these beautiful warm colors. And then in the cold places, where you want to really enhance cold, you use the blues in your white balance. A little trick there. Oh, okay. So the next thing you want to do is use a tripod. And I so happen to have a couple here. So here you go. Use a tripod. Oops, let me see. Use a tripod. A tripod is essential for cityscape sunset um, photography as it will stabilize your camera and allow you to use slow shutter speeds without camera shakes. Right? Right? But before I go, let me go back to that. I want to read something to you guys when it comes to camera settings as well. Hold on a second. Let me get this here for you on camera settings. Set your white balance to, um, to cloudy or shade to enhance the warm tones of the sunset. But you can also use a low ISO to reduce noise and a small aperture such as F11 or F16. Now, for those that were in my class, y'all know what I'm talking about. That's right. We talked about this in our last class for the month of February. In our class, we talked about F-stops. And so to increase the depth of field and to create starbursts from the, from the lights. Adjust your exposure compensation to underexpose slightly and avoid blowing out the highlights. You can also use exposure bracketing. That's another, that's kind of a deep 
for those that are not really like in their photography and using those big cameras and HDR to capture more details in the shadows and highlights. Now, when it talks about um, HDR, a lot of us have HDR. Let me just, I got all these little toys here. I mean, a lot that I'm talking about, you still can use with your smartphone. Your smartphone can still do all of this stuff. So most of the time you can go into your phone and you can click on in your settings, it'll say camera settings. So if it's camera settings, go to camera settings in your, I forgot how it goes in Apple cause I don't have an Apple phone yet, but in Samsung, just go into settings and, and hit HDR. And what that does is a com the computer generates many layers of photos as you click. So it's clicking away, it's taking many photos at different exposures, and then it, the computer combines them together. So you can do that with your, your, your phones. Use HDR. Uh, for sunsets, we are talking about sunset cityscape photography, right? Also, you know, you want to take your phone and you know use those grids we always talk about those grids but now the next thing i'm gonna go to i got all these cameras i got all these toys here um the next, we are, now i want to go to the tripod area so i have the tripods here and this is a little tripod this is a little guy that you hang out you kind of like set it up and then you put this camera on top of it and what it does is stabilizes the camera so you can go on what's called low shutter speeds because your f-stop is going to be on the higher numbers which is like f11 f16 but then your shutter speed needs to be lower so you can take in all the light but it takes time to bring in all the light so you need a little shutter speed and to prevent the vibration or shakes or blurs you want to put it on a tripod and usually when you do on a tripod, you do also, I use a timer because I don't have a, what we call a, a shutter release button. There are shutter release buttons. I don't use them. Uh, I like the timer. So I'll time it for that. It will count down to three seconds or five seconds. So that way, when I press the shutter button, the camera will stabilize and be, and will not be moving when the camera starts to photograph the image, okay? So you can use a timer, three minute, sorry, three second timer, five second timer, or whatever the, how much you think you, you need, but it's usually three or five is good enough. And then the camera will stabilize after you hit the button because as soon as you hit the button, the camera will move. The camera will move even though it's on a tripod, it will move. Now, how do you do that with a smartphone? You could do the same thing with a smartphone on a tripod. Some of us have these nice little devices here, you know, and our phones stick to it like this particular phone sticks to this little guy and I can kind of like set it up and it won't move. But also I use these guys. Now you probably say, what is this? This is like a travel tripod. It's like, I have this tripod, I look at something from, from Lost in Space. Uh, but what it does is I may not be able to use a tripod in certain places, like buildings. Like if I go to the World Trade Center, no tripods are, need, are allowed. Go to one Vanderbilt, no tripods are allowed. Go to On the Edge, no tripods allowed. And the Empire State Building, no tripods are allowed. So sometimes I carry these little guys. Sometimes they allow these and sometimes they don't because some people think of these as they could be used as weapons. So a lot of these places don't use them. But so there's a trick to photographing from tall buildings, which we're not going to go there today. But what's good about this little guy, which is a, it is a tripod. I can go to a railing and I can wrap these arms around the railing. You see that? Like this, let's say I'm on a railing 
and then I can do all kinds of stuff like that. And it can sit right on the rail. And then I can put the camera in its holster and sit it, my cell phone, on one of these. Or I can do the same thing with this guy. One day we'll talk about tripods. But I see some questions. I see some, some statements in there. Uh, and Paro says, I wrap, wrap around anything. You're right. These things wrap around anything. They are the, and they're so strong and sturdy. They are worth every dollar. I mean, it looks crazy, but they, it is the best tripod for we street photographers. You can just, again, you put it in your bag and it just, it can wrap around anything. And that camera is going nowhere. Um, let's see here. Oh, see, I see good mornings, good mornings, good mornings. Uh, yes, yeah, exactly. Uh, Dr. Taji said these are great for videos. Tripods are great for videos. Um, same thing with these little guys. Uh, great for videos. Yes, indeed. Um, so that's tripods. Okay, next thing. Next I next item. Uh, did I get Oh, just just a note when it comes to tripods. Tripods, these little guys, when your camera, it you don't have to worry about this on smartphones, but these cameras, certain lenses have what's called stabilizers. Uh, you know, they're called VR on this Nikon. It's called VR. And you it says on or off. Usually you have your VR on when you help and you hold your camera in your hand. And what it does, it stabilizes and prevents shaking. And for the camera, the pictures not to become blurry because of your shaking. So I always have my on because I, my hands are not as sturdy as they used to be. But when you have your camera on a shutter doing cityscapes, you want to take off. You want to turn off your VR so that way the camera doesn't get, it starts to get shaky. It, it starts going wild when it's on a stable tripod. So you have to cut it off. So always remember to cut off your VR on your camera uh, when you use a tripod. Um, that's just one note I wanted to leave with you. Also, here's another thing. Experiment with different focal lengths. You can use a wide angle lens to capture the vastness of the sky and the cityscape or a telephoto lens to zoom in. Now this particular one just so happens to be a telescopic lens um, from, this goes from a 28, which is a wide angle, somewhat of a wide angle to a 300. So if I can take, I'll take this lens out to 300, right? And so this is really good for me when I'm going on doing my street photography or doing cityscapes, because then also there may be something in the cityscape, like, can I show you this? I'm going to go back to showing you a photo. Let's, let's show a photo here. Here we go. And... Voila, you could have had that all signed. There we go. Like you may, you may say, oh yeah, this is a beautiful cityscape. I want the whole skyline. But there may be parts of the cityscape that you may want to capture. You may just want to capture the bridge, right? So if you capture the bridge, you can zoom in on the bridge. That's the beauty of having zoom lenses is because you can go from wide by capturing the whole city skyline to using getting tight and I should say zoom in and then catch a particular subject and frame it nicely in the camera, whatever you want to tell your story. And on the smartphone, we could do the same thing because why? For most of us, we have three we have three three lenses. The new Samsung has three going on going down. I'm still debating about my Samsung. Because Samsung is really the best cameras for photographers. Just saying. I know Apple is, 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 has come a long way. 
but the dog on Samsung may keep me because of the the camera. But that sidebar. But on your on your smartphone, you can use your wide angle lens. You have what's called normal, wide, and zoom. You can do the same thing with your smartphone, right? So don't be afraid. But oh, on, here's a note on your smartphone. Use the exact setting of the lens. Like for instance, if you want to use wide angle click on wide and just leave it on the wide if you want it on the zoom just click on the zoom and use it on the first setting of the zoom don't do the pinching thing and zoom in and zoom out usually what happens is that those pictures are not as clear as if you just simply took it in its original wide angle click click the button to wide take the photo or zoom, take the photo. And if you do that, then you can crop later and the photo will be clear, more clear than if you zoomed in with that little pinch thing that we, like some folks like to do. Okay. They're like, oh man, my photos are not as clean and clear. You're probably zoomed in with the little pinch on the screen. Don't do it. You can always crop and cropping is cleaner because the phones interpret the scene better, okay? Um, let's see uh, what else is in this that I wanna share with you guys. Uh, so we did that experiment with different angles. Here we go, next one. Focus on the composition. Use the rule of thirds to place the horizon and the sun in a pleasing position. Like you see here on this picture, I have this, you know, the horizon line is pretty much on the lower third. If you saw this, if you if I had the grid, which I'm always telling you guys to put on your phone, use the grids on your phone, use the grids on your camera, you will have this in three sections. So there'll be a line right here and another line right there. I want the bridge to be in the first two thirds of the, of the frame and I want the horizon to be on the bottom. Now I could choose to do it opposite or do it differently or whatever, you know, but for this photo, it gave me the best composition by making sure the horizon line was on the lower third versus the top two thirds. I mean, people in our Patreon community know that because I was in class for that lesson. That's an old lesson, right? So composition is key. I'm gonna read something else off to you guys about composition. Um, Here we go, here we go. I want to make sure you get this. Okay. Use the rule of thirds to place the horizon in the sun in the in pleasing positions. Look for leading lines, shapes, patterns, and textures to add interest to your foreground. Include it, and sorry, include reflections of the sunset and the city lights in the water, with windows or puddles. You can also use natural or artificial frames to draw attention to your subject. And you see that in a couple of these photos that I have here. Like I use, oh, there we go. Like this one, you, I'm I'm using the reflection. I'm kind of like using the city as a, like almost in the middle of the composition of my uh, well, here, like on the, the middle of the rule of thirds, if I'm gonna use the rule of thirds. But you got the reflection and then you got the sky. So that that's what I chose to tell the story, the composition, using this beautiful line going across, that's my horizon. And then also the way these clouds are coming out are like leading lines, leading you into the scene. So they got these leading lines there. You got this lead, leading line in the water. It's just so interesting that this water was, the sky was like this, couldn't believe it. It was literally cut in half. But there's many ways to use your leading lines or something like this where the sun, you want the sun right near in the middle, but you also want to tell your story. And when I was talking about foreground, for those that don't know what foreground is, see this, this little phone and these little hands here? That's foreground. That makes you feel like, that makes the viewer feel like they're part of the scene. Okay? So you got a little foreground here. You got some background, which is the sun. And then you got these buildings in between cityscapes okay 
Does that make a little sense? Okay, next one. Next. Watch out for lens flare. Lens flare is the unwanted light that appears in your image when you shoot directly into the sun. You know, it gets like hazy. And sometimes a lot of us have dirty lenses or our lenses may have, our, you know, maybe our lens may have some scratches on it. You're gonna, if the sun goes onto that, it's going to cause these flares, some haze. So think about that. Some remedies of that, for we who use big cameras, we have what's called a hood. This little guy is called the camera, or that's to say the lens hood. You know, you can see in there. Oops, there we go, there we go, there we go. See that? That is called the hood. And so it protects the lens. It kind of like shades the lens so that way the glare doesn't hit it and it keeps the picture nice and clean. Now, how can you do that with a smartphone? I often will use a card of some kind, a card, like I have business cards or a credit card. And sometimes I'll use my hand and I'll just shade over and just kind of like without getting my my hand over the lens, I'll kind of put my hand over and kind of like just block the sun so I don't get glare and then take the picture, okay? But you can also use something like a credit card and just kind of like just sit it right there and it will block the glare off your uh, phone lens. You probably say, Ron, you do, you do this, you hang around with your phone too much. But I started my photography with my phone. So that's why I know I use all these trick of the trades with my phone. And a lot of you guys in the audience, in this community, use your smartphones. You're not really onto this level. Some of you are, but not all of you. Okay. So that's why I'm giving you kind of like both scenarios. Okay. Let me go deeper into that. Um, here we go. Uh, here we go. It can cause a loss of contrast. When you have the glare on your on your on your lens, it can take away from the color and the detail. But to avoid all to, to uh, sorry to avoid or minimize lens flare, use a lens hood, which I just showed you. Shield your lens with your hand, which I showed you, or change your angle or position. You can also embrace lens flare. You can also embrace embrace uh, lens flare and use it correctly. Uh, create it creatively to add a dreamy or artistic touch to your image. And like, for me, I like a little sun glare. It gives me, it gives a little interest. And I'm gonna show this photo right here because you'll be able to see it. Like you see here, there's some glare here. You see these little, that there's little, you know, little bubbles of light here. There's some little flares coming out. I like flares. It just adds drama to the photo. I use it a lot, but, then sometimes I don't use it. Like I want to do a beautiful landscape. But if I want the sun between buildings and I want it to have flares, then I'll use that. So again, it's how you want to tell your story. Okay? And the same thing with using your smartphone. Last but not least, have fun and be creative. Cityscape sunset photography is a great opportunity to express your artistic vision and experiment with different techniques. Okay, any Q now we're on Q and A. Any questions? Did anyone learn anything there? I hope someone did. Uh, I see. I'm probably said, why do some people like lens flare? Ah, there's a question. I like it. I like lens flare because it adds drama. Like. For instance, you can have a scene with a couple on the beach and the, and the sun is setting and then you take the picture of the two, the, the couple and it just gives it that romantic feel between the two of them, the glare of the sun bouncing off the side of, the, you know, the lens of the camera. So there is, there's, certain, um, there's certain looks that flares give to tell the story. You'll see that in film a lot. Uh, uh, film People that are filmmakers use the technique of the flare or the, um, the what we call the burst, the sunbursts, 
that come out of the uh, the camera from different some of the scratches in your lens, or it could be um, just the angle. Uh, most of our uh, most of our lenses are not purely you know, like clean uh, or without some scratches, but a lot of that happens. Uh, Omar says, "I love lens flare." See, but all I think all the creatives will love the lens flare. It really does. Like I said, look how look how I mean I I can I have a lot of photos on Manhattan Hinge. Manhattan Hinge, I've taken. I've got I've done this probably for like seven years of Manhattan Hinge. And but I like having this, I like having these reflectives. I like having these bursts of glares. I do I have another one here like that. No, I don't have any others with flares. No, I didn't get I didn't bring out any of the other ones. I had to I had to kind of like be cool with you guys on the to me photos here. But yeah. Flares are really beautiful. Uh, Amparo says, so mostly for romance or to add haze. It could be for many things, but I use it for, I like it to, it gives me dimension. It gives me, it just makes the scene feel full. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, but it is, it is used for artistic or creative purposes. Now, you may want a very clean cityscape photo like this one. This one is a cityscape photo. The sun is just behind the buildings, and I wanted to get a beautiful silhouette. There are no flares in this shot, right? Ah, what's the difference between flares and bokeh? Ah, flares. Okay, so you just saw the flares. The flares, like most of Flares, you see the flares coming out from the sun. And you're taking pictures of the sun. And Omar, you may be, you may chime in if you want to. Um, but bokeh is the lights. Like you are filming, you're photographing a person, right? And there's city lights in the back. And you adjust your depth of field so that the bokeh what they call bokeh. I know it's, it's a photographer's term, but the little lights in the back become like soft little ball, like little soft circles. That's bokeh. They're like little soft circles. Do I, can I, you know what? I do have, I can, you know what we can do? We got the Google machine. How about that? And I can kind of like put that in there so you can see the difference. I love it. Here we go. Look at that. You can use some. There we go. There's some bokeh. That's the best way to describe it. You see that? See how these circle lights are? See that? See how? Here's another one. See how those those they're soft, but they they really add to the background. Omar says bokeh is corrected by shallow, shallow depth of field which can change the shape of lights and texture to a blurry look, right? Okay, so for instance, for those that are in the camera world that understand what depth of field is, so you may have your shutters, sorry, your f-stop at like a f 1.8 or two or a three or four. You know, sometimes you can even get some bokeh with 5.6, depending on where the person or the, Subject is in relationship to the lights behind it. Uh-huh. And flares. So now flares. I'm going to give you some more samples. How about that? This is going to be easy. That's why I love Google, the Google machine. Oops. Flares. Flare. Flare. Let's say flare images. Let's do that. Oh, no, that didn't come out right. That didn't work. That didn't work. Flares, images, photography. There we go. There we go. So that would be a flare. See the flares? Now, you can get flares with stars. 
you can get flares from a source of light, but you see how that the flare and you, and you get these beautiful beams coming out of it. That's a, those are the flares, right? So bokeh is nice and soft and clean. It's a it's a circle, beautiful, soft circles, flares, uh, lights coming out, feathering out. Mm, that was a good question. Thank you, Janet. Ah, I like that one. Omar, with, did I answer that correct, Omar? <laughs> from the from this, the Omar's in the building. Um, okay. Any other questions? Q and A, Q and A time. Uh, I see. Empower says she loves Manhattan Hinge. Trying to do reverse Manhattan Hinge. Missed it in January. Yeah, you gotta come out to Manhattan Hinge. Uh, it will. It's always the last. That for regular Manhattan Hinge, it's usually May 29th that week. Um, May 29th to 20 is two days, 29th and 30th. And then in, you get, it, you'll get it again on July, roughly July 7th and 8th, I think it is. Okay. Um, any other questions? Any other questions? Janice says, thanks, guys. Okay, I got it. I got it, Omar. Thank you, Omar. I I, I get my I gotta get the approval from my uh my mentor there. <laughs> okay, cool. Any other questions regarding this? Um, but definitely, folks, um, uh, you can do a lot with this with your smartphone as well. Again, if I can, let me just get, show you something. Now when taking pictures of um, some bright objects or let's say the day is really bright, but you wanna get a darker image or darker exposure, we have what's called filters. This is a filter. Well, this one's a polarized filter. This is, this is one of my beat down ones. I don't use it any longer, it's scarred up, it's scratched up, but I wanted to use it for you guys to so you can see what a filter is. The filter is thin. It's, it, it goes onto the camera lens, right? And then you can just screw it on and it'll go onto the lens. Now, for those that are using your smartphone and you just want to step it up a little bit with your smartphone, you can go out and buy fil like a filter. I mean, they have some that are made for smartphones, I think, now these days. But you can just get a regular smartphone, I'm sorry, a, a regular filter. And then when you take pictures, same thing, you could use your eyeglasses or your shades, and you can just simply do that and take the picture. You see? You can take that and put it right over your smartphone and take the picture, and it will give you the same polarization if you were to use on a big camera. You can, they come in different shades, they come in different darkness. So you can get them really dark and get them, you know, just a, you can even get them in colors. And you can use these, you can just put one in your wallet. I know that sounds crazy and corny. There's a piece of glass. They usually have like, they usually come in little packets. You can put it in your bag if you want to. And then use this for your smartphone in case you don't have expensive gear. You can just reach out and get a, a nice filter, put it in your bag and have it. Looks like a cosmetic little case that it sits in. Open it up, put it in front of your camera lens and snap away. Just like that. Just like that. You see? And you'll get some really good shots with these little guys. And um, cool. What else? Let's see. Any other? Any other questions? Too much handshake on cell phones. Uh, well, again, at nighttime, it depends on what you're photographing. And if you're photographing sunsets, you definitely need to. I don't know what it's. You definitely need to do these guys. Get a camera. Invest in a camera, and also invest in a tripod because you get such interesting shots with 
these tripods and the camera and taking your camera shutter speed to those low levels, like one thirtieth of a second and taking these beautiful shots and letting the light come in. It, it really makes a difference if you're interested in photography and kind of like stepping it up. Um, let me take this off here. Yeah, just use them, just use them. And um, so I think, I think that would be great. Okay, any other, any other questions? Uh, I love the value. Oh, <laughs> that says, I love the value you give. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's, it's, it's an informal kind of lesson tips. You know me. I just try to keep it where you guys learn something. Uh, Brian says, "I'm just blown away." Really, uh, Brian? What what blew you away? What about this tip Tuesday blew you away? What did you learn that was like, wow? Yeah. And Chrissy said, "That's cool." Yeah. So, but anyway. You learned about these camera lenses, these big, these, I mean, camera hoods, right? You get a hood or you take your, your hand, put it over your, cam your, your camera, take the picture, take the picture just like that. And that way you don't get any flares or glare on your lens. There you go. Okay. Anything else? It is 12, 16. It is time to let you guys go. It is time to let you guys go. I hope that you learned something today besides the politics that I threw at you this morning. I said, I'm lear I'm, I learned I'm totally not using my cell phone camera to its fullest. Yeah, you can do a lot with your smartphones. Your smartphones, and you can add little stuff that you can use on your big cameras. You can use, like, again... Something as simple as this to change the feel of your photos. And if I can kind of like, I wish I could. If I turn it around, you see it's changing, it's changing hues. Like that's cool. You see, that's like a bluish tone to the picture, right? I look more bluish and greenish. But then if I move it here, I look more orange. Right? So this is a polarizer. You can change it to cool to hot just by adjusting it like that. So that would be little guys. You can always put one in your bag. You can always have that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. B. Okay. Okay. Well, tomorrow, speaking of Omar, Omar will be our guest tomorrow. And I'm so excited because... Omar, I'm going to ask questions about, I'm going to interview Omar. So Omar won't just be chatting. I will be interviewing Omar. And then he's going to share some um, some um, uh, insights about some things that he's doing and some of uh, some new things that are on his plate. Uh, he's going to do some travels. And so he's going to share some of that as well. Um, so that's what we'll be doing tomorrow. Uh, G says, woohoo, Omar Ramos. Yeah. Um, have a great balance of the rest of the day. What way to start the day? Thanks, Ron. Metal, yellow, first, red. <laughs> Look at that. Okay, cool. Um, ah, using the uh, bendable tripod to attach to uh, to get city air uh, aerial sh um, shots, aerial shots. Yep. Use this baby. I go down to the Brooklyn the Bridge Park, and I don't feel like carrying my big tripod. I take this and I wrap it around. I wrap it around the railing and put my camera on it, and then I am done. Right, that just use use the objects around you. So these are really great products. Uh, you can catch these at B and H. Just look on the tripods, and this will be also in under that section. Okay, I think that's good. You better be on time, Omar. <laughs> you better be on time. I'm coming. I'm coming to Texas. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay, so we'll be out here tomorrow. Our tomorrow's our Wisdom Wednesday, and we'll have our guest, um, Omar Ramos, will be our guest tomorrow. 
I hope you guys got something out of today's Tip Tuesday. And um, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Uh, let's see here. I think we got it all. You know how I like to do. I will, I, since I did not come on with the intro, I will leave with an outro. And you guys can hang out and chat a little bit, a little bit as we um, close out. Okay, guys. See you tomorrow.